now. Right. Okay. Behind the screen, there's a world of pure imagination. Behind the screen. Oh, happy holidays, dummies. <laughs> if this wasn't the best holiday, I mean, it's funny to say, hey, we have a great excuse not to be around our family. But the, what normal people do is avoid their family the rest of the year. Yeah. And use this as the one time to see their family. All right. Absolutely. I agree. Uh, take us out of share so we can see all of us. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I started playing that again. That's all right. Well, we love uh, the song. What, who, do, 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 do. Wait, what am I just stop sharing, right? Okay. Yeah. Hold and then on. we'll go back to gallery view. That's what we want to do. Uh, and me. It's a world of purely but you just got a computer i actually did you know my i i told you guys that my that my computer uh shit to bed yeah you know what i mean yeah i don't know why you downloaded that app <laughs> shit to uh, bed app. i don't want to kink shame but <laughs> it wasn't so much oh never mind wait what am i doing or go to gallery view oh no i don't want to do that Okay. Uh, 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 How does everybody like the show so far? This is our best episode. Yeah, you can you can keep talking while I do this. There's no reason you guys don't can't talk. I, I started a topic and you went, yeah, let's stop talking about it while you fix the thing. <laughs> well, while you're fixing it, I will tell you the the photo that Paul shared is all of us have realizing that we're at a concert we all like to be at but not necessarily with the company we'd like <laughs> to be there with. <laughs> Such a great picture. There it is right there. Yeah, that's that's tremendous. That was a good concert. Tom looks angry. I look like I just got back from the ophthalmologist and he put drops in my eyes so I can't see yet. Um, and you just had your jaw <laughs> wired shut. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I've been in a fight. Paul looks like Paul. <laughs> well, I was posing for the camera. Uh, I I honestly don't know where to go to because I click on meeting controls and there's nothing comes up. Why don't you make me the host again, Paul? Oh, uh, I oh, oh, I almost did that. <laughs> um. Okay. So where is that? All right. So you... all right, there you go. You're the host. All right. Uh... All right. You're the captain now. Okay. Um, so yeah. I don't know about you guys, but uh, my wife is in Canada and, uh, you know, my kids don't live with me either. So I spent Thanksgiving alone. Uh, a friend of my wife's was nice enough to bring me over some food from her Thanksgiving, uh, oh, including nice. pie. Uh, but uh, I was I was all done. What did you guys do? Tom, don't you, you usually come to Phoenix to hang out with your, your family, right? Uh, usually I do that. I did not do that this year. No. I, uh, is this, this I is like called my year? parents like the weekend before Thanksgiving and said, like, uh, just so you guys know, I'm not traveling this year. And my mom was like, we were about to call you and tell you not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Tom's family is all reasonable human beings who are aware that uh, COVID-19 is happening and aren't being insane so i would imagine your mom and pop were pretty smart about everything yeah we uh, were on the same page i had a surprisingly tremendous thanksgiving because of my lovely wife <laughs> she's so funny she saw a breakfast on tv you know you know like on movies and tv when people have a breakfast and it's more food than you would ever eat like, uh -huh. you know, if it's Home Alone or whatever movie, people have a bunch of food that are not, you're clearly not going to finish. And uh, she, like, and particularly breakfast, they have a big, like, glass pitcher that is like, why did you put the orange juice from the carton into the glass pitcher? Who knows? But uh, my lovely wife, instead of going to all the nonsense of cooking a turkey that we wouldn't necessarily love and having a giant carcass in my fridge that I'm not going to share with anybody. Uh, she just wanted an awesome breakfast. 
So we had a ridiculous breakfast with pancakes and bacon for her. And a, I got a glass pitcher for the orange juice and we put out a tablecloth and um, she had four bites and was like, that was great. And it was just like a real movie because you know how in a movie they'll make a dinner and somebody will take one bite and go, oh, dinner was great. It was just like in a movie. It, it's like uh, when, uh, when cup, romantic couples get uh, room service breakfast the next day and they're in their white robes and they just eat a tiny bit and drink the coffee. Yep. They never, uh, and, but they order a whole shitload of food. Yeah, the guy eats a sausage with his fingers and then that's the scene. But it was really nice and it was nice being with the good lady and kind of appreciating each other and just not having to clean up a bunch of garbage afterwards. That was fantastic. It was a good day. And then she got bit by a cat. Is that, oh, is that, that no. the sequence of events? No, cat, the cat bite was uh, at least two weeks ago or a week and a half. Oh, ago. okay. Yeah, that was, That's good. that was a fun day too. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they're both good holidays to celebrate. Yeah, I, Thanksgiving oh, and cat biting day. It's are, nice that you had someone to celebrate both with. We are both. The cat biting day, the name is deceptive because it makes it sound like you're supposed to bite cats, but it's the other way around. I think that was why it never really became a major holiday. Yeah. yeah. We're, well, we're celebrating it, so we're bringing it back. I want to do like uh, with... Um, the Ebenezer Scrooge story. I want to write a story that people love so much that it brings back Cat Biting Day. <laughs> people are like, the holiday was completely gone. And then Jim wrote this masterpiece about- Are you, uh, gonna, are you gonna base it on a Christmas Carol though? Like the guy, three, go three cat ghosts come to visit him? Yeah, three cat ghosts, which is just, you know- one They were all, the, all three ghosts cat. are from the same cat. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It was a third one cat. <laughs> Right. He still has six lives left over <laughs> when he leaves. What? What? Yeah, where the are three you ghosts want him, to, want him to spend his next six lives well. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, you know, I'll tell the story around town and it becomes a big hit and everybody's like, loves me. And then it isn't until years later people go, Oh, you remember that guy who wrote that classic? He was problematic. <laughs> yeah, but then that's when they un unearth all your old tweets for some reason. They wait till then. Let's talk about that. You guys heard about this Ken Jennings thing? Have you heard about this? Have you seen this? Yeah, he was, <laughs> he's gonna take over for a little while, at least in the interim, uh, to uh, take over Jeopardy. And of course, what that means is they're gonna try a bunch of different hosts and see who they like best, and then pick them to be the the number one host because you don't want to fuck around the same thing they did with uh when craig uh ferguson left uh or craig craig kilborn i guess when he left and they tried out different hosts so that's what they're going to do which is fine but then uh when someone heard that news they retweeted this joke he made about someone in a wheelchair which he he then deleted i don't know why he didn't delete it in the first place but he deleted it after he was called out and it was a dumb joke the joke was something like it it's sad to see a hot person in a wheelchair you know and and mm -hmm. it's okay to say it's a dumb joke because he's not a comedian by any stretch of the imaginations for a for a nerd he's pretty funny uh you know for a professional nerd he's pretty funny but he's not a comedian and i i, I mean i think calling him out just by saying don't make jokes about people in wheelchairs is fine but I, I don't know. Is, is, is he getting extra? Like, would he have gotten a bigger pass if the joke was funnier? I guess is, is my question. I think you always do, because if the joke is funnier, it necessarily means that people recognize it was a joke and just not a cruel comment. Right. That and, is and that, yeah. And I think like when you're a comedian, I always say, you know, as if, if you're a comedian and known as a comedian, People have to give you credit on, you know, benefit of the joke. They have to give you beyond the benefit of the joke. You know what I mean? Sure. This guy doesn't mean anything he says, unless it's the very few times when we do things like, listen, I know I joke around a lot, but I'm here talking about reverse mortgages or whatever the fuck we take yeah. seriously. Um, that is but what if it's going to get canceled for is your position on reverse <laughs> mortgages. I was actually out until Tom Selleck said he was in. I'm not going to argue with Magnum. Um, and I already got like three of them on this house, man. It's fucking great. Got so much money. Um, 
Uh, but my point is, but he's not a comedian, so he doesn't have that luxury of just saying, oh, I was just joking around, uh, fuck off. You know what I mean? Uh, we can say that. And also because it doesn't, I mean, it, to me, it sounds like a joke because who would say something like that? But it's not inherently funny. You know no, what I mean? He, and, he did issue an apology for it where he said, he was trying to make a different joke. He thought it was, he, he thought in somehow in his head, he was trying to make a different joke and it got away from him. And he sees now what a terrible ableist joke it came off as. And he said, I apologize for what it came off as. That's not what I meant. And I'm sorry I did it. And I think that's, uh, I mean, indicative of the fact that he's not a comedian. He told a joke poorly and wrong and still left it up for a year you know what i mean yeah. like yeah. how many times have you guys seen an old post of yours and went oh fuck that's not what i meant to say and you immediately delete it well you know tom you're barely on social media but that I, guys I legit, who post a lot i legit have never had to delete a tweet of mine for that reason and i'm not because i'm i don't know why but i've i you won't find an accidentally racist post by me you won't find an <laughs> accidentally transphobic post by me you won't find any of that, be, but because I you stand by the racism and transphobia. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Um, I don't know why there are jokes that I've posted where I want to delete them because I'm like, Ugh, why did I think that was funny? But yes, have, that's what I'm talking about. But that's I have no problem the standing by them, though. So I don't I don't delete those either because mm, okay. those are just misses. And it's always like a joke about bitcoin or something that no one's gonna <laughs> it's just a misfire in my twitter feed because by the time i got onto twitter uh a lot of folks in real life had done their due diligence in trying to make me better and i had listened to them so i was already on my way to not doing that i think if you're already on, on your good behavior yeah if twitter existed when you and i were in our 20s i think we'd have been shot <laughs> Well, we would have just done it uh, anonymously like we did with all those AOL chat rooms and stuff. <laughs> um, well, let's, uh, I, I, before we get into the, our other topic, I want to talk about the new Saved by the Bell. Have you guys seen this on Peacock? I, I mean, uh, I'm aware of it, but I didn't watch the original, so I'm not going to watch this one. Well, that's the thing is I, my first thought was, yeah, fuck this show. Saved by the Bell was one of the worst TV shows ever. So this is bullshit. And uh, it is a first episode free. You got to pay for the rest deal. So I've only watched the first episode, but I got to say uh, it's really, really good for a number of reasons. Um, the, the biggest reason is that it, it refuses to stop making fun of itself. First of all, constantly making references to stupid shit. Um, the fact that uh, Mario Lopez and Elizabeth Berkeley are in like every episode, they work at the school now. And uh, at the beginning, they're like, uh, please welcome our school counselor, author of I'm So Scared, I'm So Excited to Grow Up, Jesse Spano. They make jokes like that throughout the entire show. But the premise of the show is that there's another school in the Palisades that a bunch of rich kids do not go to. In fact, it's a shit school. They, make, they go over the line like, like rats and bad plumbing and shit like that. And it gets closed down. So all these lower income kids have to go to Bayside now. And that's really ultimately the premise of the show, how these brown kids and underprivileged kids uh, are going to fit in and back and forth. And more importantly, all these white kids like Zach Morris's kid, who's the star of the show, uh, they're not assholes like the original kids were. They're still kind of, they're still very um, self-centered. And they certainly don't mind using their wealth and their connections to get what they want, but they're not, uh, they're not selfish, um, which I like. Uh, and, and, and there's certain jokes, like at one point, the, the one girl from the other school, she's talking on a cell phone, but it's Zach's old cell phone, that big fucking thing, you know, the big one from the 80s. And it's just like, oh, she's poor. So she has to use that old cell phone. <laughs> I get it. Um, and uh, John Michael Higgins is the new principal. So he kind of rides that line between being an idiot and being an actual guy. And I hear there's an episode because he's the same. Supposedly, he went to Bayside when he was a kid. Uh, but of course, that, that character didn't exist. 
So I've, I'm told there's an episode where they green screen him into old scenes from, from the show, you know, shit like that. And they explained there was a, a zoom in with Lisa Turtle. She did a, a, a cameo and they explained that Screech is in the space station with his robot, Kevin. So <laughs> everyone's accounted for at least. But I find it funny, the, the two kids who were actual kids on the show who went crazy, they're not really involved. It's only the ones who were adults that came back. And they're all producers, of course. Um, you said you saw it, Jim? No, but oh. I found it interesting. There was, there's been multiple people who hated the original show who have come out to go, listen, I know this sounds crazy. Yeah. The show, and they're saying the show, and I found that interesting that they, they did the opposite of what you normally, that's kind of an interesting inversion. Because usually what you do is you take a show that's beloved, that was good, and you ruin it. That's what you're Yeah, saying. in this case, they took a show that was beloved and was shitty and made it way better. The main reason is Tracy Wigfield is the showrunner, Yeah, uh, you know, uh, from 30 Rock. So it very much has that vibe with the jokes. You know, there's there's no laugh track. And I, It's like, it's very easy to miss jokes. And one of the things I've been told is that along with, you know, having the poor kids and all this stuff, that it's legitimately satirical about what's wrong with our culture too in a way that the yes. original show wanted to be but never was of course because it was you know i'm sure you've all seen those zach morris's trash videos fuck yeah and it's funny to look back on that show and think yeah you were supposed to like him why were yeah. you supposed to like him he was even he was racist he fucking he was the worst yeah. Yeah, i mean i understand people who like that show they were children when they watched it and you're not responsible for what you like as a kid but don't tell me it's good yeah. it's not good yeah. you just liked it the show and it's shit like that i mean and if you watch the first season when they were actually all little kids that wasn't what the show was at all. But the other thing I like about this show is there's an actor on it who is trans. And uh, that's not so unusual these days. However, before she came out as trans, she was on other shows and presenting as a guy. Uh, it, it's the kid from uh, that show Champions. You remember that with uh, Anders Holm mm -hmm. and Mindy Kaling created it. Anders and his brother ran a gym. And he had a kid with Mindy Kaling who came to live with him. I'm sure you must have watched at least one episode, Tom. I actually didn't, but I, I, I'm aware of it. Okay, so the kid was clearly like growing up gay and he was into musical theater and whatever. And he was, you know, loved fashion. And that was part of the joke of the, of the show. But I guess between then and the other things he's been in and now uh, she's now come out as trans and changed her name. I guess it was JJ something and now it's Josie. Uh, but she's also an executive producer of the show because uh, that's a major uh, character. And the funny thing is, like, I saw the character and thought, boy, that voice sounds familiar, but I don't know who this actress is. And then they mentioned that she was trans. And I said, oh, so wait a minute. Is the actress trans? She must be because we don't do that anymore. Get, you know, non-people to play the thing that they're playing. Um, and then I looked it up and realized, oh, that's why she seems so familiar because I'm familiar with her work back when she was JJ. Well, that's uh, nice. But it's but it's uh, but it's a major part of the show, obviously. That like apparently she has her own reality show. That's how rich these kids, uh, these Bayside kids now are. The only thing I don't like is that they all go to the max, which is fine. But that fucking magician guy is there. Uh, and they brought him back. And that was one character they did not need to bring back because he sucks worse than anything else on the show. He's not funny. But I suggest everybody watch it. You can watch the first episode on Peacock for free. Nice. Uh, nice. Yeah, so. Um, I will. Right. That's awesome. <laughs> Maybe you will. I Eventually, will. you'll hear about it so much, you'll be like, I have to see what, the, what this is all about. I'm finally watching Breaking Bad, and I'm smart enough not to make anyone listen to me talk about it, but I'm finally watching it. Yeah, well, Saved by the Bell is a new thing. Less people have watched it than have watched Breaking Bad. In fact, I'm going to say in the history of the world, less people will watch the Save Saved by the Bell thing than will, will ever watch Breaking Bad. For the rest of time, I'm going to say that's a safe bet. That's a pretty good show. Uh <laughs>
Yes, it is. I just started watching The Crown first season. I'm actually enjoying it. I thought I would hate it, but I like it. All right. I'll bring this up as a subtopic and we'll get through it quick because it's not worth talking about much, but I'm watching Lucifer and I have a question. You watched the, you've watched it once, Paul? Is that what you- I watched the first episode when it premiered a million years ago. I didn't hate it so much. The only thing that made it unwatchable for me was the idea that this hot cop used to be an actress and was in this teenage uh, sex romp movie or whatever. And it kept like being a recurring joke. And I was like, you don't need to explain why she's hot. She's a TV cop. I get why she's hot. And it, but I just thought, and then for some reason, she went from being a, a, a hot actress to a cop. That has never fucking happened. And that I thought it was insulting to my intelligence. But I will say I liked the performances, at least in that yeah. first episode. Tom, have you watched the Lucifer show? No. Okay. It's also not. my understanding it's very popular with the ladies. Yeah. Yes, my understanding as well. My, the show, this is what happens to me. I go on... Uh, <laughs> I get into go on to video spirals where I just see cl- clips from things. And then I'm like, oh, I keep seeing Lucifer clips and they're very entertaining. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna watch the show. And I don't know if it's good or not. <laughs> yeah. It's a funny show because the main character, uh, Lucifer Morningstar is, he is the definition of chewing the scenery as an actor. He, that's all he's doing. He's, doing the thing people say you shouldn't do, but is sometimes entertaining to watch. He's so ridiculously over the top. And yes, everyone is good looking and the murders are gorgeous. <laughs> and I was just trying to figure out if I even like the show. And I'm like, the other thing too is for sure, I hope they get to a last episode because you know how like the ending of Lost was disappointing to some people? Yeah. If this show gets to an end, it is going to be the most disappointing, not paying off anything I've ever seen because the they've boxed themselves into a delightful corner that I'm like, you guys are not smart enough to get to an ending that anyone's going to enjoy. And I kind of like that. That kind of happened with Supernatural. Yeah, um, I've heard that. just went off. I, the last episode of Supernatural, I loved. The penultimate episode where they tied everything up, uh, was a little disappointing because uh, I was I was over that entire storyline anyways. And it's because and it's because they gave you a great show, but there's always going to be some smoke and mirrors. But this like the premise, first of all, none of us know why the devil decided to run a nightclub on Lucifer, but that's what he's doing. None of us know why he got sick of being in hell and why he even gets to choose. None of that is explained like he's just, and God wants him back in hell. Well, then God can just put him there. That's how it would work. <laughs> but no. Apparently not. And then for some reason, he's helping this lady cop solve mysteries. And uh, and she don't believe he's the devil, even though he- Ever? Maybe she does later. I'm about halfway through. Oh, okay. okay. But- uh, but the things that she's seen that she's like, huh. I mean, I know the devil could do that, but he can't be the devil. <laughs> it's stuff like That's that. the thing is like even Scully, you know, her, the whole point of, of Dana Scully was to be the doubter. Even she had to go, yeah, I had a baby in me and then I didn't. Yeah. So that was weird. Yeah. Maybe the truth <laughs> is out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's this one, I watched this show, uh, it's uh, it's like a Russian show or whatever, and uh, it's called Gogol, and it's it's the star of it is that guy, Gogol, who's like like a Russian or Ukrainian philosopher or some shit, I don't know, but he's like, uh, 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 he like hunts down ghosts, and in the first episode, he teams up with an actual cop who's like, I don't believe in ghosts, but these people think they're ghosts, so why don't you come with me, and you can talk to them about the ghost while I solve the murder and they get there and a bunch of shit happens. And at one point the cop shows up, he's like, what's going on? And this ghost like picks him up and throws him against the wall. And he's like, all right, so there's ghosts. I'm on board. Let's <laughs> all right. Let's look at this from another angle. And, uh, and it's like very refreshing to see that That's when so someone funny. just goes, Oh, okay. Uh, I guess you were right. 
there's such a thing as ghosts. <laughs> that's fantastic. And that he's immediately, because that's what would happen is about 30 minutes after meeting the real devil, you'd go, ah, crap, you're the devil. That's <laughs> what would why wouldn't you play even just give him the why just assume it's the devil what why play it safe why would you want to assume it's not the devil what advantage do you have by by assuming this guy is not the devil yeah my irritation too is she's always she's all very dismissive like doesn't even consider the things he's going through you know yeah oh no, no here comes a guy who's all dirty and he's walking weird and has a beard but I'm not gonna assume he's homeless yeah. and gonna ask me for money. Yeah. I'm not gonna assume that. Oh wait, here comes a guy with a knife and running straight at me. But maybe he just wants to show me the knife. Yeah, she uh, <laughs> she's got like no sympathy for him is what bothers me. No sympathy for him? Yeah, no. Yeah, it bothers me that you said that. Tom, All right, fine. let's. Let's what? talk about this what? show. What? What? It looked to me like you knew what dumb joke I was trying to get, and you were just going all right oh no, yeah no come on <laughs> I, who doesn't get it uh let's talk about this show be positive which was the main thing we wanted to talk about right. all right it's it's new on cbs and uh it's a chuck laurie show and it stars some very a chuck funny laurie show on cbs people, right and it stars some very funny people and mm-hmm. yet it is no fucking good so and your I, review is also going to be negative exactly about i cannot be positive about be positive here's my first take and then you take you take over my first take is the show looks to me like a bunch of sketches from the tracy ullman show strung together (laughs) the lady the lady is a fine actress but lord is it just a garbage she is inhabiting a garbage character i don't mean that her character is a bad person i'm like why has she got so many idiosyncrasies in the way she behaves that gives me no person to see? She's like, she's like, like Monica on, on Friends. You could picture that a person could be that. But it's like if Monica was just constantly waving napkins going, I got to wipe stuff down. And you're like, okay, that's too much. Dial it back. She's what the where is the human being on that goddamn show? Also, why is it a sitcom? Why is it filmed like an old sitcom and you're talking about a guy who needs to have his fucking kidney? What? Yeah, see, I, hilarious. I, I I'm gonna disagree with you slightly in that I enjoyed her. She's the element of the show I enjoyed the most because she's okay. the only dynamic thing in the show. Yeah, I agree with the that. whole rest of the show is so flat. So maybe which, is, which is amazing considering Thomas Middleditch is already a proven comedy commodity. Yeah. You can point to actual things that will make oh, you laugh that he does. There and are fantastic people on that show, but like it, that show, it, that show is full of actors that I like better in better shows. Yeah. Dave Higgins, uh, the like, chick from Good News. Yeah, every time Brigham Heelan is on the show, I'm thinking, boy, I wish Good News was still on. Everything, every They're time Catherine Donahue is on the show, I'm thinking. Man, I loved You're the Worst. Like, yeah, I'm, right. I'm, 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 I was spending the whole show thinking about all the shows these people did before that were better. I was looking I so sh- forward to it because of Kether Donahue and other people like that. And then they come on screen and you go, so they don't want them to do or say anything funny? Because it seems like that's the deal. They don't want anybody to do anything funny except for uh, Annalise, whatever her name is. It is. It's an under... It comes across to me as a show where you needed you needed to take your script and there needed to be three or four more rewrites or something because it, it, it's it, not it, strung together very well scene it, to scene i give them i give them props i want to give them props for trying a new premise we we haven't seen guy needs a kidney transplant as a oh. as a sitcom before so they oh, actually and, found yeah. something new and there's could there could be something interesting about that journey yeah. It, unfortunately it does not feel like this show has a point of view about that and it really needs one to succeed the yeah. show i want to see is the show suggested by the opening credits because the opening credits are like dark and ironic and the rest of the show is not yeah here's the thing, Here, here's the the thing about great. in the third in the third episode he he finally tells his ex-wife i think that's in the third episode 
and it gets better because it's more realistic. And I think that's the biggest problem is, first of all, the premise of the show is completely faulty. The idea that he's going to match with somebody he knows is so fucking uh, absurd that I can't believe it. Secondly, she's an alcoholic who has been damaging her body for years. <laughs> she is in, first of all, she is not in physical shape to give up a kidney. And more importantly, like they talk about, she's way too big a risk. I will say I had a friend who needed a kidney and uh, I called the hospital and said, hello, I'd like to see if I can give my kidney to him. They interviewed me, then they called me back and said, well, you're too old and you're too fat, but thank you very much, click. Yeah. And that's exactly what I expected, quite frankly. And didn't I you, thought, Paul, didn't I thought, you also but, ask him for a second opinion and they told you you were stupid? <laughs> yes. Like, I thought the premise was that they were related. When I first heard about the show, I was like, oh, she's his cousin or something, and that's why she can give him a kidney. But the fact that they're not related at all is fucking absurd. And they have this whole scene when he goes, did you guys see any of the dialysis stuff? Mm-hmm. So they had that whole scene yep. in the dialysis room where they're all like, you're an asshole. We would kill for a kidney. Yes, because that's how hard it is. Yeah. He shouldn't have a fucking kidney that easy. These, it, 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 and it's fucking absurd on top of that. And the thing I hate the worst about it, I, I realized in this last episode, is the, and I don't blame her, but the daughter character is not even a character. Uh, it's a joke. And the the young lady who plays her is awful. And when you just watch the girls on the unicorn who are fucking hilarious, I mean, not only are they decent actresses, but they're holding their own comedically against yeah. Rob Corddry and Michaela Watkin. Yeah. They're really funny kids. And uh, I told Gina that. So when then when you watch the one kid on the unicorn just fucking dialing it in, clearly nobody gave her any direction at all. And maybe that's the problem with that show. Nobody... They, people think it's a Chuck Lorre show, so it's just going to drive itself. But it seems it seems like no one's behind it. And I and you know what? I don't know if you guys watch Bob Loves Abishola, uh, but I watch it and I really enjoy it. And it's clear that that show has you know Gina Yashir, who is uh, also the, I think she's the showrunner. It's she's passionate about the show and it's really fucking funny. And they and they constantly talk about how weird it is that this giant white man is dating this uh, beautiful, wherever she's from, black woman. Uh, and yet it, it's, it's fun and enjoyable to watch because they're acknowledging how weird it is. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and that's realistic about it. And there's only one kid on that show and he barely does anything. Yeah, um, you make a, I was very struck by the scene where, um, her dad tells, finally tells his, his daughter that, hey, you know, I'm going to have this kidney surgery. And it's such a just perfunctory, quick, just distillation of what that conversation would actually be. And then she communicates in vague, vague words that she's worried her dad will die, but she's certainly not communicating it in uh, the way she's showing. She's not emoting. And and she's, but I think you're right. I think she's just not given a lot to emote with. Like, for real, her it fault. feels like a bunch of scenes strung together. It doesn't feel like you're telling me a whole story yet. It's just wildly underwritten, I think. Yeah, I, I, it seems like it's on autopilot. And, and it's, people thought it, it's just a Chuck Lorre show, so it'll be fine. It's 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 a shame, too, because they have middle ditches that, at the center of the show and he's a good actor and he can do he can be a good straight man but like you've got the straight man still has to have a personality he has to have something he can bring to a scene that adds to the comedic frisson and he's he's they're not giving him anything to do he like he doesn't to, have anything to contribute and it's and mid, only, middle ditch is great but they're not giving him anything to work he, with the only thing he does is react to her that's all he he yeah. does is react to all the things she does and that gets old like halfway through the fucking like show. Jim Carrey show Duck Factory. Yeah. It's really a great, it's a great example. The, the show that Jim Carrey did nothing funny on. Yeah, where you've got this amazing guy. By the way, uh, Middle Ditch, that's his name, right? 
Yes. Have you ever seen in something him, him in anything where it looks like they tried to comb his hair? Is he? He always <laughs> looks like that, right? Yeah. Okay, because he just always looks like. And again, I'm not. I have terrible hair of whatever, but it looks like he just nobody ever takes a comb to him. <laughs> Probably. Why? Why bother? Yeah. Hey, did you guys see that meltdown is finally gone? The building is torn down. Oh. No, I haven't been out of my house <laughs> since March. Oh. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, I saw some pictures of it. That whole thing is gone now. How does uh, it feel that you've outlived a building that you performed in? That's a bit of a milestone. Uh, I haven't thought of it that way. Also, I, it's you're being pretty generous saying that I performed there. <laughs> uh, I mean, you were on stage more than once, right? No, I think just the once. Mm. I, I think I only ever, the only thing I ever did there was your podcast 100th episode or yeah whatever. um all right uh let's let's well, are I've we done talking about there. this oh yeah I've seen a million are we done talking about this show yeah well i mean i guess it's worth noting that it's had three episodes and it could still get better but like what yeah. i'm not hopeful based on what i've seen i'm surprised it's on regular cbs because usually it's, a show like that they put on all access and it also people. it feels weird I mean, I, I, it's, I'm sure it was a budgetary decision to make it a multi-camera show. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's because of the premise, if they were scared, if this network was half scared of the premise and decided they were only willing to spend so much money on it. So it's going to have to be a multi-camera show. But doing a multi-camera show during the pandemic when you cannot have a live audience and the, the, the laugh track has to be entirely canned it like it doesn't help add energy to this show that's already pretty inert. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. the show yeah. could have, if they were gonna push forward with this show, it would have been better served by going single camera, I think, because then they could they would have had more room to do something interesting with it visually, and and they could have helped it in the editing. Right, that's an interesting point too, and and also just live shows like that that are filmed in front of a live studio audience get the benefit of ah hell they were not laughing a lot like you'll hear about stuff like whole scenes that got rewritten because you put them in front of human beings and as we all learn in stand-up or improv or sketch or whatever you do a scene and you're like oh i i guess i was wrong yeah <laughs> and, and this is a new show so it's not like they'd already started it as a multi-camera and you're kind of locked into that mm -hmm. Yeah. So they made the choice to push forward with this format at this time. And I don't know if that was a good decision. I don't also does it seem kind of klutzy to you? Because it seems a little clumsy to me that we have he's got the ex-wife who he's estranged from, but she still cares about him. And then we sort of get the indication that she may even want to get back with him. And then we introduce the woman who's going to give the kidney is now living with him. That I'm like, ah, eh, you're man, you're really putting in a lot of like ham-fisted conflict anyway inside of a it always yeah. bugs me when i'm like so we've got this guy who might die if he doesn't get a kidney but where's the conflict <laughs> <laughs> that stuff always bugs the shit out of me like i was uh, about it with a friend of mine today about how um voyager may not be the best star trek whatever but you don't need a romance for Janeway in any of the episodes where they were like, eh, maybe her and Chakotay, that other guy who's got nothing going on. Look, they never needed to do that. She's the captain. Let her be the fucking captain. That's enough. And anytime yeah. a show does that, it's, it is a weakness on the imagination of the writer's part that you can't, that you cannot find a way to find drama in the part that's the most dramatic, the kidney. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's almost like someone said, "Well, will he ever get the kidney?" Because once he gets the kidney, the show's over. Which, if, you know, which we all know that's not true. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, every fucking high, high concept sitcom, and by high concept, I mean any concept oh, whatsoever. I got any, any any sitcom that has any kind of like twist or or uh, wackiness is always written out by the second season anyways. Mm -hmm. And it's all just about the characters. Yeah. Here's what you do. Kidney, you got kidney, all right? Season one, kidney. We, we, we give him a kidney, he's great. Second season, one of his lungs goes bad. Because uh -oh. <laughs> he was so happy with that kidney, he started smoking. Yeah, now, yeah. now he's gotta get a transplant. And there's a biker 
who happens to be a perfect match and he doesn't want both kid both lungs so he's going to donate then now he moves in <laughs> now wait how can you live without lungs man that how can you find the one person that had a kidney for you i don't know that that it would actually be funnier if they're like oh no now i need a heart and like Oh well, someone has to die for that, and so he he gets someone dies, and he gets a heart, and someone dies, and he gets their lungs, and then he gets all these things from people dying, and then they find out he's been killing them all. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not we were, and find out we were wrong because it's not a comedy, uh, in any ways. Well, we were um, right that it's not a comedy. <laughs> well, yeah. We're good. Okay, <laughs> right, here's, here's here's the other here's the other oh. thing about the show, if the show lasts, if if the show lasts it might be no um <laughs> i would not be surprised if it if the show becomes if they lose one of the casts because right now they've got three casts they've got him and his wife and his daughter at home they've got his dialysis friends and then they've got her at work with the old people and her work friends right the thing that sitcoms do a lot in the beginning they they try to go oh it's going to be half at home and half at work and now this is splitting work t two ways right. but that never lasts they always end up winnowing that down and so and then if there's a character in the other scene that they like they'll find a way for them to yeah. move in oh i work in this office now i got a job working here now yeah uh, so yeah, i would it, not be surprised it, if this show lasts if it if it figures itself out and lasts at least one of those settings is going away it yeah. would be yeah it would be nice to keep seeing Bernie Capel and Linda Lavin, of course, we all, all TV fans like to see them, give them funnier stuff to do. And maybe Middle Ditch now starts volunteering at the old folks' home. Right. And the four right. of them, and that's where they go. And they're never at their home anymore. And so it's just the old folks' home and the dialysis place. That's it. I, I, I like did the you notice? Did He's you notice, funny. by the way, that um, Bernie Capel, by episode three, is is... He, apparently he's 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 no longer with that lady he was with in episode one. They broke up, <laughs> or she died because we don't see her again. Yeah, yeah, either way, that's what I love about it. Anything could happen with those I old did, people. I did like him offering to have sex with her. That was funny. That was actually funny. <laughs> I I'm glad you mentioned them because that was the one part I found funny. And and yeah, maybe maybe the kidney transplant doesn't work. He dies. Then it's about her at the old folks' home. <laughs> ah. Great show. I love it. How many times has that happened? They just retool it. Why not? It, All right. Here's my trivia question about Be Positive. I'm sure uh, I have a feeling Tom will get this, but Thomas Middleditch uh, was on a, a, a lot of shows before this one, uh, including um, Silicon Valley, but he also was in an episode of a, of a popular show where he played the brother of a very popular TV character. Do you guys remember whose brother he played? This does sound familiar. He was on a long, he was on one episode of a long running sitcom where he played the brother of one of the major characters. And he's also a beloved character in pop culture history. I do feel like I should know this and it's not coming. Yeah, I thought for sure you would. Oh, son of yeah, a I'm going to feel, I'm going to feel dumb when I hear the answer. I'm going to feel got, like your, your Zoom name. Do you want, no, it's not me. Look where the arrow's pointing. Oh, I'm going to feel like Jim. Um, on my side, it's pointing away. So it's to pointing at somebody over there. <laughs> Make somebody stand there. Uh, oh, do you have a guess? No. <laughs> well, the question is, whose brother did he play? So you could just make a guess by naming a character. Like, don't say Frazier, because he, he already Lilith. had a brother. <laughs> no, not Lilith. Jim, do you have a, 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 a guess? Joey Tribbiani. No, because he only had sisters. He didn't, he didn't have oh, a brother. Yeah, you're right. Um, all right. Well, I, I'm surprised. Okay. Well, anyone listening to this, if you can, uh, you know, send me a Facebook message or whatever, get it through to me if you know the answer. Uh, I'm sure somebody listening will know the answer. And if you uh, do, maybe you can play my game show if you want to. I'm always looking for people to do that. I have Mike Kaplan on this week. He was very funny. Wow. Um, uh, all right. A anything you guys want? Anything else you guys want to discuss? I'm out of topics. I have a small topic, but oh, Tom. your penis. <laughs> Tiny. 
Um, Tom, you got a topic? Nope. This is uh, just a general observation. Uh, so I've watched a little bit of the SNL again, and I stopped watching SNL altogether. And I have stopped watching talk shows altogether. And oh. it is because I don't want to hear monologue jokes about a monster. Yeah. And I don't want to hear monologue jokes about a, a white nationalist. Yeah. Uh, what pick your, a uh, fascist, pick, pick whatever word you want to say. And it's interesting to me that I watched SNL and I was like, oh, it's funny again. And is it, it, it's some of it is as funny as it's ever been. Some of it's like, probably that wasn't a great sketch, but it was very enjoyable. And a lot of the other shows are enjoyable too, because, um, you know, we've all had a lot of trauma as Americans, as if we were in a terrible family and you had a abusive alcoholic father who would dominate your time in figuring out how to avoid him figuring out how not to make him mad and all that stuff that happens in abuse. And it's interesting to me to see comedy return because the other part of it is that I just, I don't think it's funny to make jokes about the same subject over and over again. I just find that, you know, if Tom, you've never put yourself through this, but sometimes you'll be at an open mic and everybody is, every fucking person has like a joke about Twitter and they've got some take about Twitter and they bring it up. And by the 10th person who goes, hey, are you guys familiar with Twitter? You want to punch somebody. <laughs> and, and, they're, and they're not self-aware. They still say, are you familiar with it? And it's nice to see people make jokes about other things. And yeah. I'm, are you having that experience in your TV viewing? Um, well, I, I will say I, I like shows that like uh, This Is Us that are taking place in this actual time wearing masks and talking about uh, what's going on in the world. And it's kind of tough. You know, the new Animaniacs was really good, but they made it point that they finished this like year, like months ago and they have no idea who's even running for president while they're doing it. Yeah. Um, so that's like out of out of sync. Um, I, I mean... I will, I will give credit to the young people on SNL. It seems like, uh, cause there's a, you know, like my kids are young people and they, you know, they look at this year, these past four years, uh, like my daughter, Gracie just voted for the first time ever, you know, and she voted for Joe Biden, of course. Uh, and I think uh, Zoe too, they both were able to vote for the first time this year. So they look at this this past four years as like, wow, you guys fucked up. You know, they don't own they don't own any of this stuff that happened. There, some of them are victims of it, but none of them own it or are responsible for it. And I think there's now cast members on SNL who are like that. I mean, granted, not they're not all young kids, but they also they didn't vote for Reagan, they didn't vote for George Bush the senior. Which, let's be honest, that's when all this shit happened. Uh, you know, when Reagan made it clear lying is perfectly fine if you're a Republican, that's when this all started to go downhill. Uh, but I think it's people like that, like, it, it's funny that you say you don't watch talk shows either, because the only one, I, I, the only one, show and Seth Meyers, and partly because they give me the news that I want. You know, they give, they tell me about things that are happening in the world, and yes, they're making fun of it. But as we've discussed many times, you, you can't make fun of something that isn't true. You can't, you know, make a guy look stupid by putting a dumb hat on him and then make fun of him for wearing a hat. He has to put the hat on himself. I mean, you can if you're family guy, but. Exactly. So they, so they tell the truth about that. Um, and the jokes come from a But the jokes come from a very different place. You have Seth Meyers, who is just obsessed, dogmatic about pointing out every tiny thing that Trump and his people do and explaining exactly why it's wrong and explaining exactly why we shouldn't like it and what we can do about it. And every time you feel him when he's done with a closer look or whatever, you feel like he's going to say, and by the way, I'm sorry I let this happen. I'm sorry for my part in what I did because he feels partly responsible for making fun of Trump at that correspondence dinner. In fact, he, uh, he feels guilty for for fucking showboating about, you know, dunking on him. Because if anything, Trump dunked on every fucking one of us. And then I watched The Daily Show, 
where you see Trevor Noah, who basically says, I had nothing to do with this. I can't even vote in this country. And I certainly wouldn't have voted for this fuckwit. Uh, so here's all my jokes about how fucking crazy this country is. And, and, they, and they come from a very specific place. And that's, I think, the problem is the voices aren't specific enough, even in late night. Uh, fucking James Corden certainly isn't. Uh, I just, I watched a couple Colbert's um, over the election and I realized why I stopped watching Colbert is because of his fucking band leader. Uh, you know, I don't want to give the guy shit for not being funny because he's a musician, but don't talk to him. Just let him play his music. You don't need to ask him any questions. He's not Paul Schaefer. He's not Reggie Watts. He's a fucking jazz musician from New Orleans. And he's only asking him about the trombone. Yeah, they well, to be fair, they only talked to him for about 30 seconds a show. I think they, I can't I think take they understand. It. It, and it actually gives me flashbacks to fucking Jay Leno and Kevin Eubanks, probably the worst fucking host sidekick pair there ever was. You guys have seen that, right? You've heard about that. Jay Leno and Kevin Eubanks. <laughs> What's this now? Yeah. Have you seen that? <laughs> People are talking about it. Yeah. yeah, everybody's talking about it. Yeah, I just, um, uh, I think a lot of people are, are saying people are having this experience where you don't realize sometimes how bad things are until they get a little bit better sometimes because you go into crisis mode and to see like an adult in the White House is, is jarring and then it makes you sad that it's jarring. Yeah, because you realize, oh, I've been, compensating for awfulness this whole time yeah um but i've been lucky enough i mean obviously my i don't know about you guys but i my privileges kept me very safe Hi, jim what do you do because i go i got i stopped going to the albertsons by my house because this fuckwit wouldn't pull his mask up and i lost my temper and uh made a fucking scene and now i can't go back there uh so i go to the safeway down the street but i see every maybe every third visit i see someone without a mask on sometimes it's an old person sometimes it's clearly a fucking trumper yeah uh, sometimes it's just a dummy what do you do as an employee uh when people are at the grocery store with their mask off i actually have a pretty good story for you all right uh, so the other day so i am uh ostensibly in charge a lot of times at the store i work at that's uh, called a manager right in, in your business well, in my business, we're called mates because we use oh, not that's right. terms, but for all intents and purposes, let's say manager. But you're not a captain. No, no. Tom no. is the captain, right, captain? Si, soy capitan. Yeah. No, that, soy marinero, soy capitan. Something funny happened, captain? Isn't that what that guy said to you at, at the Arby's or whatever? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. KFC. Oh, no, he, he called another guy captain, and then I laughed, and then he wanted to fight me. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and it was a KFC, not an Arby's. Come on, Paul, give me some credit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, go ahead, Jim. So you're a mate. You're yeah. an add-on matey at Trader Joe. Exactly. So, and my approach to being a manager is to not be anything like managers I've had in my life. So one of the things I do is just my whole intention is uh, whatever I do, if I can make it easier for the people who aren't me to get through their day at work, then I've done a good job. So that's kind of my philosophy is just, I take care of the people who do the bulk of the work so that they feel like they're being led by someone who's not a maniac. So that includes if there's a yelly customer, I'm like, okay, well, I get paid a little bit more, so I'll go get yelled at. You don't need to get yelled at. And then later on I go, by the way, you're not in trouble for not wanting to deal with that horseshit. You're right not to want to. So that's how I deal with it. It's why I'm liked. A uh, dude comes into our, our store and he's not wearing a mask. And um, one of my crew members says, that guy's not wearing a mask. And I go, no problem. I'll go talk to him. So I went up to him and I go, hey, man, how's it going? Um, we need you to put your mask on. And he goes, I have a medical condition uh, that I can't wear a mask. And that's objectively a lie of some kind because he's fine. And I go, all right, no problem. I understand that. So what I'm going to need you to do is we're going to walk to the front of the store you're going to give me a list of what you need to buy. I will get a, I'll put it together and then we'll check you out and you can pay and leave. And then he goes, I kind of want to do my own shopping. And I go, I get it. You have a medical condition. Everybody else has a medical condition too. Their medical condition is they don't want COVID. That's also a medical condition. So 
we got to kind of work with each other. And he goes, ah, oh, I, I guess you just really want people to wear masks. And he goes, yep. I go, yep. And he goes, all right, I'll put on my mask. <laughs> what the fuck? Apparently, in the space of our conversation, he was cured of whatever medical condition he had. If, if I didn't know better, I'd say that was from someone from Trader Joe's corporate doing a shitty spot check. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, but they wouldn't do that because. No, they, I know. I, I know better. Well, partly because they're all quarantined because they don't have to work. So <laughs> right. So it was funny to me because. I wasn't even really mad because it ended so quickly. And as long as stuff ends quickly, I don't really care too much. You like, if you're stealing, please steal quickly. And then get the fuck out before yeah, I have to catch you. If I catch you and I have to deal with it, I'll deal with it. But if I don't, and you're at the door, I'll wave politely because I don't care. And I'm not even, I'm not paid to care about that. I just you got a no chase policy there. At I just Europe, want everybody right? to get home safe. So yeah, in general, as a, on the front lines that's just the kind of horseshit you deal with see and like when i was at albertson's it wasn't so much that the guy didn't have his mask up but nobody gave a fuck like he's he, he's looking at the wings he's out at the wing bar with his mask down below his nose and i'm like hey buddy can you pull your mask up and the thing is it doesn't really matter what i say i might as well say pull your mask up fuck wit before i hit you with a chair because they hear, they hear whatever they want to hear, no, no matter what. And it's always an assault. So I'm like, hey, can you pull your mask up? And he just looks at me and goes, why don't you just stay six feet away? And I go, oh, well, that's fine, except you're breathing your COVID all over the chicken wings. All you got to do is pull it over your nose. And I turn to the deli and go, are you guys going to do anything about this? They're all wearing masks. And one guy actually says, it'll be fine, dude. And it was clear that that store could go fuck itself at that point. Yeah. Uh, but it's like, you know, I always go to a manager or somebody first, but when they say, well, all we can do is uh, ask them to wear a mask, but we can't, we can't make them. And I'm like, bullshit, you can totally make them. This is a private business. You can, if they're stealing, you can make them give the thing back and then throw them out, right? You can do that. So you can make them wear a mask or leave. So just to contextualize it, the person you're talking to, they may not be able to do anything about it because, and that, again, it makes it perfectly valid for you to choose not to shop there. But if you're talking to a manager and they say, all I can do is ask them, I can't make them, they're following the corporate policy. So they're correct because the company has obviously made a choice. And a lot of companies have done this. Uh, a lot of companies that at the very beginning were like, we have a, no, a solid no mask policy, had one or two instances where a 16 year old got yelled at, or somebody got punched or somebody got shot. That's a real thing where they went, okay, masks are now a suggestion because we don't want to get yelled at, shot or have a 16 year olds harassed. So it's a tough thing when, first of all, you can't you can't enforce a law that's not a law. And in Arizona, it's certainly not a law. Uh, and Arizona is a good example of a place that certainly hasn't mandated masks. And then even if you no, mandate, even if you mandate masks, this like Arizona is a good example of a place where this would be so fucking hard. You mandate masks. So who's, how are you enforcing it? Um, I work at Albertsons, let's say. I would never work at fucking Albertsons. Come on. Um, <laughs> I work at Albertsons, let's say, and, I, and you're like, that guy doesn't have a mask. All right, let me get my crowbar. What the fuck am I going to do? All I can literally do is go, listen, man, I need you to wear your mask. I'm not going to wear my mask. Okay, well, you can't shop here. Well, you're not kicking me out. And I go, yeah, I'm not kicking you out. I'm 5'7 and I'm 50. I guess you're shopping. That's the thing is I want to kick people out. I'm not working there. I want to go, hey, fuck with put a mask on. And as soon as he says something, fucking throw a box of cereal at him. I don't uh, some, work there. Some of you may know this, this gentleman. Uh, we all have a mutual friend named Walker and Walker played professional hockey and Walker is about six foot six or so. I don't know how tall he is. He's just a big, big old man. <laughs> uh, he's like, uh, like 10 feet tall. He is. <laughs> he's uh, Bill Brasky. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Walker a couple of times, 
uh, has told me tales of being in a supermarket and going off on somebody. And when Walker does it, they go, oh, you put on the mask. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because it's not, Walker. Not me. Because you know? Walker's got Walker's still got guns. And even if he doesn't, they're on the frame of a just a giant man. It's just kind of funny. But like my my dumbass walking up to you, like, uh, I wonder what this old fat guy, because I'm just a guy with a pot belly and I seem pretty affable. You but know? you also have masks on you to give people, right? We don't but do you- that. You don't keep some in your pocket and go, here you go, buddy. Do you need a uh, mask? No. Because I've heard that's a polite way to say, excuse me, do you need a mask? And when they go, oh, I have one, then you just go, oh, can you put it on, please? So it's a problematic policy. No, we we don't do that. I know some places do. It's problematic because um, with everybody buying up so many masks, sometimes if you were to have a policy like that and then you run out and you couldn't get them because there's still times when you're trying to get them that you can't. Yeah, yeah. You know, I have a bunch of fabric masks that I use. I prefer the medical ones because they don't jack up my throat. But because the fabric ones, if you have to wear them for 10 hours, the little fibers get in my throat. Yeah. Wearing them for 10, I, that's, I, yeah, that's not good. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I've only had to wear my mask for, oh, I don't know, three hours at the most. And I take it off when I'm in my car. All so. right. Speaking of masks, since we brought up the subject, some people, by the way, are deceptively good looking with masks on. Well, you're hiding half your face. Yeah, but it's not, it's not just that it's not like, oh, I can't see the face. It's like the mask and you're like, damn, I'm pretty sure that person's hot. And then they take it off and you're like, well, they're not, but that's all right. See, look how hot I am. When I put my phone, see that? Man, smoking hot. Watch, check this out. Check how good looking I am. Come I'm on. giving myself a boner. <laughs> I'm so hot, man. It's mainly because then when they can't see my face, they have to focus on my body. And that's all they can see after. Once you've seen my body, it's all over. Yep. All right. Uh, Jim, do you want to do a mashup so we can end this? I do. Uh, I do. All Here right. we go. Uh, hey, uh, what are you? Uh, that guy, yeah, uh, you gotta do something about this guy, uh, stealing all these, uh, uh, stealing all these hamburgers. The guy, the guy keeps uh, stealing hamburgers from us. That's not supposed to, happen. yeah, he's gonna steal a lot of hamburgers from us. Uh, so yeah, maybe in one of you got, what do you need some help from the fry guys? Huh? Oh, yeah, need some help from uh, what do you, what do you want to get one of those guys maybe over there to do that? Uh, maybe you want to get doesn't seem like much thought went into this. No, I'll be honest. <laughs> No, it's not. It's not. It's not even like a good wordplay because two no. of those names are the, exactly the same. So, yeah, it's Ronald McDonald's, I guess. No. Ronald McDonald's. No, it's not. It's Norm not. McDonald's. No. Norm McDonald's. Right? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in charge around here, and I you gotta get, get catch a guy stealing a hamburger. So, wait, it's Mayor McDonald? Yeah. It's Mayor McDonald. I thought it was Ronald, because I mean, no, that'd why, be a dumb one. Well, why? Why is the mayor concerned about chasing him? He's Wait, he's trying the, to run a city. The mayor's name is McCheese. Yeah. Well, this is Mayor McDonald. It's Norm McCheese, or <laughs> oh, like or, or is it Mayor McDonald? Which is it? I like Norm McCheese. Norm McCheese. <laughs> Did you think it was <laughs> Ronald Mc, McDonald's, Tom? Yeah, no, because yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, well, I, God, God, what he's okay. He's I, 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 the, he somehow managed to break the rules of a game that has no rules. <laughs> he took the simplest version of that and made it worse and harder, and <laughs> made, it makes less sense and is even less funny. What, what than, you, uh, what I'm you, terribly what, unsatisfied. Yeah, what are you? You don't like it? Oh know. man, <laughs> that yeah. I am not loving it. <laughs> that's like that's like okay. I got I, I, I got to find the French connection. Oh, there's some heroin over here. Oh, I found a heroin. I'm driving real fast through the streets in New York. Eh? Skip it do. You know what that was? Popeye. Popeye Doyle from the French Connection, right? Popeye Doyle, right? 
No, it is bad. It is yeah. bad. Yeah. Pop, see if you can guess Popeyes. It. Doyle. Uh, see if you can guess this one. This this might make up for it, right? Hey, I uh, uh, when I eat a bunch of I eat the spinach here, I get a real strong. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's Popeye. It's Norm Popeye. <laughs> All right, all right. How about this one? Well, being on the Supreme Court for so long was certainly uh, uh, an honor in my life, even though I'm dead now. But you can still enjoy a delicious roast beef sandwich. That's R.B.'s Ginsburg. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, okay. Get it? <laughs> That's that's the best one today. I'll give it RB's that. Ginsburg. I well, mean, there's at least a dumb wordplay involved there. <laughs> the bar's pretty low, I mean, but I'll I take mean, it. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. I think we have to <laughs> somehow call that one the winner. Right. Oh, that was funnier There's than no I thought it was going to be. Ruth Bader McDonald. Well, yes. Uh, <laughs> sure. Who doesn't? I didn't want to hear the other two, but that didn't stop you. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Oh, Tom, you, you've been listening to a new show, haven't you? Oh, is this where you want me to do a bit where I plug your show? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> you... What is it, Tom? What's this new show you've been listening to? Uh, why is this my responsibility? I don't know. I'm just playing along. I'm just yes, Andy. Jim and Alex have been doing a show where they talk about Billy Joel songs. And I've right. been watching his YouTube videos because they're that's funny to me for some reason like conceptually it's funny to me that the show exists and that i'm following it <laughs> it's like when jim said he was going to get into david bowie yeah right yes just the, the whole that's idea big. the whole idea is just something hard to get your brain around but that's just, that's on youtube right jim yeah uh we, uh, we just uh, dropped a new episode today uh so there's actually six episodes you dropped like two last week. I don't know why you did that. But by the time, like literally while I was watching episode five, you dropped episode six. So this is already feeling like a treadmill to me. <laughs> I'll tell There's you a what lot of, A lot I'm, of material there. So I'll, I'll tell you what happened. Our good friend Alex is very busy because he has a real job and a real good job. He writes for Seth Meyers. And, um, but he's very, he, I, he must be enjoying doing the show, which is very nice of him. And, uh, he wasn't able to record for a few days. So, and, and he was apologetic, which is silly because, but he's just a nice man. So yeah. he, we got together, you know, we zoomed in to record and he's, and then he gave me the idea for the next one. Cause he picked the song for the next one. And then he went, Hey, and I'm free in a couple of days. If you want to record another one, cause he obviously wanted, wants to do one a week. Like I kind of want to do, and he didn't want to miss a week. So I'm like, suddenly I had two of them. So it was very nice of him. And then we recorded one the day after Thanksgiving, which, and I, you know, I said, you know, if you're too busy because of holidays, he wanted to do it and he's very nice. And obviously it's, a lot of this is easy because of pandemic because we're all stuck at home and we need stuff to do. Right, that's, yeah. I mean, I same deal with my game show. I'm swinging big, trying to get good guests. It's funny to me when uh, a guest, uh, I, will, I will book a guest who I think is going to be great and they will, always find a reason not to show up uh like uh, i had robbie wrist you know we've all we've robbie wrist friend of the show he's nice enough to come to my house and be on our old podcast many times but he just like the day after the show he was like hey am i still doing your show and it's all it's always stuff like that because uh, i always think well they were doing me a favor in the first place but yeah you want to swing big when uh when it's all you got to do is get in front of your 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 screen your computer screen because if they don't want to do that to be on your show they don't want to do anything with you yeah i had i booked uh, you'll find this funny jim i booked kathy ladman on the show and when uh, i when she found out she had to write hashtags i she didn't say this but with the day she found out she had to write hashtags she bailed <laughs> she didn't say it's because of that she just said sorry i can't do it but i don't blame her because i think a lot of people are like wait i have to write stuff for this show eh, forget it but i will say so we've done six of these episodes and just because alex is a very charming funny dude i think they're very enjoyable and because it's just two dudes talking 
there's not a lot of like no one's interrupting ever it's always it's a very nice there's a nice flow to the show and we do tom you tell me if we're i'm right we do a pretty credible job of periodically talking about billy joel lyrics right on occasion on rare occasion you get around to talking discussing the show or the 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 song at hand yeah and then a lot of and it's always like if you've ever wanted a cynical take on billy joel they're because they're they're not very charitable they're always like what's what's the uh, how could we make billy joel sound like a big jerk here so i i hope that's not really Oh, I hope that's not what it's coming across. Well, he is he is notoriously a jerk. He's a giant jerk. <laughs> I don't I, my understanding is is he's notoriously just a regular dude. So he's as much of a jerk as anybody. But he's also very nice and charitable, so to be fair. But yes, what happens is I think sometimes you'll the a Billy Joel song sometimes if you just heard the music, you'd go, this is an amazing song. And then sometimes you add in the lyrics and you go, this is a pretty good song. <laughs> that's just sometimes the case in the latest episode we talk about this fairly obscure song running on ice episode six i think you'll enjoy it where it flips because the lyrics are actually really good and the music's okay um but running i hope on, it's i hope it's still tom it still comes across like we like billy joel right <laughs> yeah well you wouldn't be doing the show if you didn't like billy joel but it, it's just it's funny to me how you rarely are interested in the charitable reading. It's much more fun to assume <laughs> that this that this song is is secretly awful, and this is a terrible human being who's saying these words. You well, and so, yeah, and sometimes yeah. For uh, one of the episode five was inspired by a conversation I had with Tom, and uh, in analyzing that song, I mean that was a fair reading where you're like, oh, wait a minute, this song is just- a there's, a more, there's a more charitable reading that you guys skipped past. Fair, fair. So you can watch those on Jim's YouTube and, uh, and you can watch my old episodes of my game show on my YouTube. Yeah. Comic Jim Bruce. Comic Jim Bruce. And uh, uh, like I said, when we else? get to episode 10 of the vodcast, uh, I will also just release all 10 as a podcast for those folks who like to listen to stuff in your car and are like, I'd like to listen to Billy Joel, but not Billy Joel songs. Two dudes talking about <laughs> Billy Joel. I want to listen to stuff about Billy Joel, but not Billy Joel himself. <laughs> all right. Uh, is that it then? Are we all done with this? I think so. Okay. Well then thank you for listening to everybody. Uh, we're going to go fuck ourselves. <laughs>